Okay, let's have admittance for today. So previously, we have the first experiment. So we have impedance in series. And here are the terminologies that we had. We have impedance Z. It is measured in ohms. Resistance R measured in ohms. Reactance measured in ohms also. So reactance is indicated by letter X. So here is the circuit. We have a voltage source and a series RLC config. So what do we expect from here? We are expecting what? Only one measured current since this is in series. So as you can see here, the waveform for the current of R1, L1, and C1, they uh, coincide or they only have one waveform for the current. So that is expected since it is in series. So now we'll be dealing with a parallel RLC circuit. Okay, so as a review, you can imagine this for series network. So for DC, in getting the total resistance, we need to add the resistances. So we just have to add R1 plus R2, then have the total resistance. For AC, so the total, or if you're going to translate it, the impedance is equal to R plus JX. So resistance plus the reactance, okay? So the real part is the resistance, reactance is the imaginary part. And you can imagine this for parallel networks. So for parallel networks in DC, so we need to add the inverse of all the resistances. So 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 equal, equals the uh, 1 over R sub T or the total resistance. So the same goes for AC. We need to get the inverse of the impedance. Okay, So 1 over Z, the inverse of impedance equal to 1 over R plus JX. Okay, So as you can see here, we did not just simply uh, separate 1 over R plus 1 over JX. So since Resistance here is the real part. The actance is the imaginary part. We cannot just uh, separate them okay, into two different fractions. So we need to have them in a single or yeah, single denominator, 1 over R plus Cx. So if you're having AC, parallel circuits, it looks troublesome to see this every time, right? So always solving for... Um, fractions or having denominators. So let's express this in another term that do not need fractions or denominator. So let's have 1 over Z or the inverse of impedance equal to Y. So this Y is called the admittance. So for admittance, it is the measure of the flow of current which is allowed by a device or a circuit. So if it's the inverse of impedance, impedance is to what? Restrict the flow of current or slow down the flow of current. So for admittance is uh, the flow of current in which is allowed by the device or circuit is being measured. So, so it's the inverse of impedance. So we have y equal to g plus jv so it looks like the impedance rectangular form j is equal to r plus jx so this time we have y equal to g plus jv no? just like a rainbow no? roy gb ha. <laughs> okay for admittance we have y and we have conductance g for the real part okay and here is the imaginary part, susceptance. Okay. So again, we have 1 over Z equal to the admittance or the inverse of impedance for the Y. Also, we can express this in terms of re resistance and reactance. 
So we have 1 over r plus jx. Okay? Admittance. So we have already discussed admittance here. The terminologies that we had. So why admittance in Siemens or Mo? So this is the unit. Mo is the, uh, if you're going to reverse ohm, so you will be reading Mo, right? G, conductance in Siemens or Mo. B, susceptance in Siemens or Mo. So this one, as you can see here, the conductance in terms of resistance, it's not just simply 1 over R. Okay, also the susceptance, it's not just simply 1 over Jx. So we have arrived with this one by multiplying 1 over R plus Jx, multiplying it by the conjugate. So what's the conjugate of R plus Jx? R minus Jx over R minus Jx. And then we will arrive with the real part. The real part is this one, R over R squared plus X squared. And then the imaginary part equal to negative x over r squared plus x squared. So this one is the impedance. Uh, it's like the impedance triangle. It's called the admittance triangle. So we have the admittance, conductance, and susceptance. Okay. So next. The conductance here is the real part, just like the resistance is the real part. The susceptance is the imaginary part, just like the reactance. And this is the vector uh, admittance, so just like the vector impedance. And this is the angle theta. So we can get admittance by having the Pythagorean theorem. So square root of the square of conductance plus the square of the susceptance. Okay. Or in terms of resistance and reactance, we need to get the uh, 1 over square root of R squared plus X squared. So it's the inverse. Okay. And for getting the angle, so arctan of susceptance over conductance. So opposite over adjacent. Okay. So here are the elements, the admittance, and their symbols. Okay, for resistor, we have 1 over R. So in series, previously, we have just R for its impedance. And then for capacitor, we have J omega C. Omega is 2 pi times frequency. And for inductor, we have 1 over J omega L. So omega is 2 pi times frequency. Okay. So in impedance, series impedance, for capacitor, it's 1 over J omega C, right? And for inductor, it's J omega L. So it's the other way around here for admittance. Okay. So the, denom uh, the one with denominator here is now the inductor. Okay, so for parallel RLC circuit, we have the same values, but now our configuration is in parallel. So we have 10, 100 millihenry, and 2.2 microfarad. So our expectation is the voltage will be uh, only one because we are in parallel. Parallel, we have a parallel configuration, and also we only have one, uh, one node here, and the other one is the one connected to the ground. Okay. Okay, so that's it. That ends our discussion for admittance.